This is John Ryman with the fourth and final part in our series on why Marxism opposes individual terrorism. We saw in our previous parts the difference between individual terrorism and an actual armed struggle. We saw the historical attitude of Marxism towards our individual terrorism, the historic failure of the strategy of individual terrorism, and struggles such uh, as diverse as that in South Africa and Chile, and uh, also the same failure in Palestine. We also saw how those who adopted the strategy used the fetish of the gun to hide their adapting to one capitalist class or another, be it the South African capitalist class or the Arab capitalists. In the case of Palestine, we discussed how the Arab Spring could have played a role in transforming the struggle against Zionism by raising the class question and socialism. Here, we will discuss some perspectives for the future. Now, one note, we will be referring to the region as Southwest Asia, North Africa, or SWANA. And two countries may be key to a future potential renewed Arab or SWANA spring. First is Iran, which has had an ongoing, although now repressed, revolution for several years now. And the other is Syria. Some Iranians complain that the people in the Arab world do not really support them and their struggle. But it would be easy <clears throat> for the Syrians to break through that barrier, since the Iranian theocracy has been central to keeping Assad in power. Also, the masses in both those countries have had their taste of rule by Islamic fundamentalists, ISIS first and now Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, or HTS, in part of Syria. And, of course, the mullahs in Iran. A final common point is that both peoples would be more immune to Russian influence. While there may be a general prejudice against socialism in Syria, due to the fact that Assad has associated himself with that term, that can be overcome. We must look beyond what exists at present. Today, seeing the unchecked barbarism of the Israeli army in Gaza and the West Bank, it's difficult to imagine any positive movement coming from inside Israel. However, just as we must look beyond the present in the region as a whole, we must look beneath the surface inside Israel. The Israeli Daily Haaretz published a fascinating article on April 15th. It explained how the rabbinical hierarchy whipped up a barbaric war frenzy of bloodlust among the soldiers. But it also described reactions of some Israeli soldiers to that barbarism. It disgusted me, said one. It broke my heart, said another. Another reported on the following. On the first day, a friend of mine from the crew who was very right-wing was angry that I gave the people in Gaza water and bread. On the second day, he broke down and gave water and bread too. Another said Gaza gives you a different perspective. You realize how people live there and how they lived before. You feel empathy and compassion for people because of the, of the lack of water or basic means of existence, but also anger and hatred. It does leave a mark on the soldiers. Some deny it, others acknowledge it. These soldiers did not directly rebel. It takes extremely unusual circumstances for that to happen anywhere. The deeper problem is that those individual human reactions had no political space to express themselves. Were there a new internationalist and socialist Arab spring, a, an Arab spring for full, total liberation, some of those soldiers and others inside Israel would gravitate towards it. In conclusion, the rise of Hamas flowed from the historic defeat of the Palestinian people and of the world working class. In this, it is similar to the rise of Zionism. The methods of individual terrorism are not the methods of the working class. Where those methods have been taken up, it has been uh, by middle class student types, for instance in Russia, Chile, and Iran, or by the Stalinists, for instance in South Africa, 
or due to long-term serious defeats of the working class, like in Palestine. We must see beyond the present and underneath the surface. We must translate a genuine mass working class struggle into the potential for a socialist international internationalism. The people of Southwest Asia and North Africa will rise again. A genuine working class, internationalist, and socialist platform can link that uprising with a layer of Israeli youth and workers and isolate the most racist within Israel. Together, an international socialist federation of the entire region can be built. That is the alternative to the nightmare that Zionism uh, presents. Co oh, workers of all lands unite, and that must be our call. Socialism stands for freedom, for it means nothing at all. Which side are you on? 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 I ask you, which side? are you on friends which side are you on which side are you on which side are you on women life freedom women life freedom